My name is Kenneth Brescher. In real life, I'm a professor of astronomy and physics at Boston University. Uh, most of the time, I do things having to do with stars, galaxies, and the universe. But what we have here is a toy, well, a physics demonstration toy. And you see various versions of this toy, which was invented originally just after Newton wrote his great book, The Principia. And Newton, in 1680, explained the laws of motion, gravity, calculus. He essentially invented all of modern science, physics, the universe. Right away, he understood if you have something that uh, moves around, you have balls, and they roll around, and they stop. You could have a cylinder roll around, and it would stop. Gravity pulls it down, friction stops it. Let's make it a little harder. Here's an inclined plane, tilted down towards the camera. Something rolls down, rolls downhill, just like it normally should. In 1694, a British mathematician, this is not long after Newton, said, well, if we make a different kind of object, um, oh, let's make a double cone. And if you took a double cone and asked, what will this do? You'd say, well, it's up here. It's going to roll down. Doesn't roll down. Well, let's try it at the bottom of the hill. Rolls up. Two cones glued face to face, and it rolls uphill. So William Leyburn, in 1694, wrote a little paper on mathematical recreations, the very subject of the gathering for Gardner, and said, ah, this violates Newton's laws of gravity. How does it do that? Well, actually what it does is, if you look carefully, the cone is falling in the gravitational field in the sense that the center of mass of the object is falling down. But because of the shape, it's moving uphill, but you're moving along the, to the edge of the cone as you move up. So the center mass is moving down. The thing looks like it's moving uphill. Actually, the center mass is going downhill. So this demonstration has been called the uphill roller for the past 300 years. I had been working on making uh, rapid prototyping objects for students to use in astronomy courses. One of the most complicated things that we try to explain to students is that the universe could be like a sphere, could be like this table, but it also could be like this object which I'm holding here, which is called a pseudosphere. Now, a pseudosphere is the simplest example of what's called a space of negative curvature. This one's flat. We call this a flat universe. That's a sphere. That's a closed universe. But this one here is a, a hyperbolic, uh, we use examples of hyperbolic paraboloids. This thing is called a pseudosphere. And the universe could be shaped like one of these things. So now, I ha now comes to the psychiatry of this whole story. Part of my brain is thinking about teaching my next class in astronomy. Part of it is thinking about elegant woodwork. It has nothing to do with each other. And so literally, I got up screaming one night in the middle of the night and said, now wait a minute. What if I put my astronomy class on top of this thing? What's it going to do? What do you think? And I woke up and saying, this thing is going to oscillate. It's not going to go uphill. It's not going to go downhill. It's going to oscillate. So I get up, did exactly what I dreamed up in the middle of the night. My wife comes downstairs. She says, what are you doing? It was 3 in the morning. And I said, look at this. She says, yeah, so what? although she is a physicist, too. And I said, it oscillates. Doesn't go uphill, doesn't go downhill. It oscillates. So that, in a nutshell, is the pseudosphere uphill roller. First riff on this demonstration in 300 years that's new. So this object here will roll uphill. And this one's been rigged up as a double version so that it can wind up at the top. It'll roll uphill on this side and hit here. It'll roll up here, but eventually it'll wind up at the top of the hill, which is, of course, ridiculous. 
but if we place this here, oops, this will sit here and oscillate until it gets to a position in the middle, but it will oscillate. It won't just go up or down. So here's my elegant version with all kinds of nice woodwork on it. And there's the uphill roller. This demonstration has been written about several times, or had been written about several times, by Martin Gardner. And um, Martin also liked to write, not only did he write about magic, mathematics, uh, and puzzles, but he wrote a column in a physics journal for teachers called The Physics Teacher. So Martin Gardner made this very simple, elegant version where he used two pencils, a deck of cards, and a ping pong ball. So the ping pong ball will roll downhill if we have the two pencils diverging. But if we make the pencils converge, then the ball can roll. If we make it converge, the ball can roll uphill because its center of mass can fall down. The point about all this is that the angle, this angle, this angle up here, and so forth, all determine whether it will roll uphill or downhill.